Welcome to Speaking of Schomburg. I'm Village President Al Larson. In this episode, we'll hear from Schomburg's Economic Development Manager, Matt Frank. Then we'll talk with two recently published authors from the Schomburg Township Library. And we'll close out the program with a look at this year's Presto Holiday Concert. All of this and more today, here on Speaking of Schomburg. With 9.5 million square feet of retail, and commercial space, 12 million square feet of office space, and 13 and a half million square feet of industrial space, the Village of Schaumburg is the largest center of economic development in the state of Illinois outside the city of Chicago. Joining us today with an update on the Village's economic prospects is economic development manager, Matt Frank. Matt, welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg. Thanks for having me back. So what are you doing here? What is this economic, you know, where do you find economic development? What, what do you do? It's, it's a lot of uh, business recruitment and networking, uh, reaching out to uh, the business community, the real estate agents, the brokers, the businesses, attending some of the trade shows to lure them into Schaumburg. Where's the trade show today? Where is that? Uh... We have a couple of the ones that we attend. Uh, so the big retail show is out in Las Vegas that we go to once a year. Uh, we also go to several in Chicago, uh, network with the, the local folks here as well as some of the office and industrial events that take place in Rosemont and Schaumburg and elsewhere. How long have you been doing this? Uh, I'm going on 15 years with the Village of Schaumburg. Really? Yeah. How many years have you been doing economic development? About seven years. And what were you doing before that? Uh, a planner here for the Village. Okay. So worked my way up. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess you. <laughs> How many staff people do you have? Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a one-man shop, but we have a team with the Community Development Department and others yeah. who help us okay. with that. Now, there's all kinds of activity taking place on Meacham Road. Yeah. What's going on over there? Well, we just opened up Meacham Gatherings. So on the border, uh, Roti, Protein Bar, uh, Beer Market, uh, all recently opened up here in November. And uh, there's some discussion about the old Bally's uh, site just north of there uh, being redeveloped and to include even more restaurants and potentially a hotel, which would be a really great addition to the community. Why, why are hotels good? Well, hotels bring uh, out-of-town traffic, uh, help our existing businesses. So when they bring in corporate clients or uh, the le leisure uh, business, uh, you know, they stay in our um, uh, hotels, go to our restaurants, do shopping, uh, help out the business community and everybody else in between. All right. Now, speaking of, of uh, uh, Meacham, back to Meacham Road, that's yeah. becoming kind of a restaurant corridor, isn't it? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, uh, you know, we see that only enhancing with the uh, prospects of uh, the interest in Bally's and other locations along Meacham that may turn in the next uh, year or two. Well, that's great. N uh, some of those restaurants, name some of them. You, 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 protein bar, what do they do? So Protein Bar is kind of a health conscious uh, restaurant. They've got several locations downtown Chicago. Uh, you can get all sorts of breakfast items, uh, lunch. They've got the shakes, salads, um, the burritos they call, all made with uh, fresh ingredients um, under 500 calories. So uh, another healthy concept in town. What's, what's, and of course, speaking of healthy concept, what about the beer garden, the, the beer? Beer market? <laughs> beer yeah. market. What, what's that all about? So th this is uh, kind of the craft brew. Everybody's into the, you know, the unique brewing and beer that's out there. How many uh, craft beers have they got? Uh, they've got over 200 uh, beers. You, you work your way through <laughs> yeah, yeah, you have to go once a day, I suppose, to try them all out. But uh, what's interesting, though, is they are, uh, you know, have some small select food selection there, but they also allow you to bring in uh, some of the neighboring. So if you want to go to Roti, grab something, go over there and have a beer, okay. uh, enjoy one of their flatbreads, that type of stuff. So it's kind of a, you know, hang out after work. Okay. Oh, and, and you mentioned the, the Bally site. What, 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 what kind of uses are, are going to be? You said a restaurant? And, 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 and yeah, it's our hope. You know, the, there's uh, Egg Harbor has been looking around in town for quite some time. So Egg Harbor, I think, would be a great addition. Another breakfast uh, restaurant and uh, serve the hotel guests as well as the businesses in the area. Uh, we're talking to... Uh, They're open half a day? Or, or? Yeah, breakfast and lunch. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, there's talk about, you know, uh, Uncle Julio's been looking around, Kona Grill. Oh, wait, wait, wait. back up. Yeah. What is Uncle Julio's? Uncle Julio's is... Is that a pizza a, place? No, no, it's uh, Mexican. Uh, so, ah, okay. Uh, they've got location, uh, River North, uh, very nice. Okay. Um, so th they're out there. Kona Grill is kind of a Hawaiian fusion uh, sit-down restaurant. They would also be a wonderful Okay, addition. besides pineapple, what would you have in a Hawaiian <laughs> fusion? <laughs> Pork, uh, beef, and some of the other... Uh, Beans, I would imagine. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, okay. But no, no, a very uh, uh, high-end uh, restaurant. So uh, we're getting a, a mix of uses out. Uh, they recognize, you know, the Meacham, Schaumburg location as a place to do business. So. It's interesting because it used to be, uh, uh, have to be on Gulf Road, right? 
Yes. And and now it's a kind of, they, they like Meacham Road now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the opportunity is there. You've and, got, and they like streets of Woodfield. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Streets continues to do very well. They're nearly 100% occupied, and the restaurants and uh, retailers over there do a phenomenal job. Are we going to ever run out of uh, restaurants here? I mean... Uh, well, uh, we, we hope not. We're, you know, we're looking to uh, bring some of that energy north of 90 uh, by the convention center, uh, create a uh, TIF district up there to help bring development. And so we're calling for an entertainment area over there that convention goers and residents in that area can walk to. So uh, we imagine a few more restaurants up there would be uh, ideal for that. Now, the, the, you know, the, the, the hotel that's coming in and, and the restaurants that are coming in right now are not in a TIF district, are they? No, they're not. No, they're, so they're re providing a great deal of, of uh, assessed valuation to, to some of the taxing bodies, right? Absolutely. I would think that District 54 and 211 would be, would be very pleased to see that kind of development taking place in Schaumburg. Yeah, I, it's, you know, we've got great locations and uh, still some vacant land, so people are taking advantage of that. Now we just want to kind of spur some of that investment north. Now, what about residential? What kind of residential development is taking place in Schaumburg or, or poised to take place in Schaumburg? Well, Pleasant Square is under construction now, so they've got 10 units uh, in construction right now that are sold. And Pleasant Square would be? Schaumburg and Roselle. So this is a long awaited project that uh, we've been planning and working on. Um, so it's great to see it take form just south of uh, uh, the Baptist Church there. Um, so those 10 units hope to be uh, occupied in the spring and they'll continue with the construction uh, next year. A, a great deal of interest. By, I, I understand they've got some sales over there. Yeah, they've already got 10 sold. They got a VIP waiting list of over 200. So uh, yeah, MI Homes is doing a fantastic job of uh, marketing the product and it's a great location. So you know, right in the heart of Schaumburg. Now that's rural houses and townhouses. And, and then uh, a small strip of single family along Pleasant. How many single family homes? 10 homes. Okay. Yeah. They're going to be custom? Uh, yeah, semi-custom. All right. Who's developing that? Uh, so Warren McElwain, uh, who is one of the uh, uh, project founders, is uh, uh, going to do the single family and the townhome developments. MI is doing all the row homes. Now I understand that Lober Brothers has uh, uh, finally sold their, their, or have something, have a, someone have, has a contract on their property up there, up there North International Village. Is that correct? That is correct. So uh, Dr. Horton is looking at uh, reviving that project, and that would be roughly 50 lots uh, for semi-custom, high-end, single-family homes. Very high-end, I, I would imagine. Yeah. I'm, think we're approaching a million dollars for it's a beautiful piece of property with sure the creek is. and the trees and everything like that so. i know you have martha dooley doing she's the point person on the mm -hmm. project and she certainly knows a lot about trees and, and shrubbery and vegetation yeah. and landscaping yes yeah, so it would be a beautiful neighborhood if uh they what, move what, what's there. happening on Schaumburg road just just uh, across the street from the from the post office. Post office, yeah, uh, Coventry. Or the township, uh, I don't know. Yeah, the Coventry Woods is what the development's called. So American Colony is uh, proposing 12 single family homes over there. American Colony recently did the Georgetown development down at Irving Park and yeah. Wise. Um, they wanna come back and do some single family over here. And again, that's another beautiful piece of property. It's unincorporated, so we're working on the annexation uh, to bring that in the community so that you Are you sure we didn't do that at the, the last board meeting? Uh, the annexation? Or was that we something? had to postpone the annexation last board meeting. Ah, okay. Um, so all hopefully right. we'll do it in December and get them all lined up to okay. go. Those are, those are big lots too. I mean, what, yes. 12,000, 14,000 square feet right. foot lots, right. which are a lot bigger than the, than the quarter acres that, that we, we've had. So that's going to be a nice subdivision. Yeah. So uh, any, there's, aren't there some uh, properties along Lincoln? Uh, yeah, there's a small um, uh, development by Lincoln and Thacker over there uh, that's uh, looking to do six homes. Um, so we're working with them on that, uh, uh, that review process. Um, so yeah, it's all these info sites, you know, as the economy comes back, housing market is bouncing back as well. So, uh, you know, Schaumburg's obviously with the great schools and park districts and location, it's a desirable place to live. So we're seeing some of these builders take advantage of that. And we have quite a bit of industrial development, don't we? We do. Yeah, we, uh, you know, this past year we saw Shigaya open up another Japanese business here in town. Open More up. Japanese companies in Shamri than anywhere in the state of Illinois. Yeah, absolutely. And another one coming next year, Sunstar. Uh, they do the uh, dental products and toothbrushes and uh, flosses and everything like that. So they're building their uh, headquarter facility next to Medieval Times, uh, bringing 400 jobs from Chicago to this gorgeous new facility. So yeah. we're excited about that. And uh, yeah, uh, we've had several uh, businesses fill some of the vacant down in yeah, Spectrum. Yeah. So uh, we're continuing to see some more uh, interest in. And the airport's doing well? Airport continues to uh, provide a wonderful amenity. And, and the hell stop? Hell stop's uh, still there. I s <laughs> occasionally see uh, the choppers from the traffic uh, yeah. folks go up and down. Okay. Well, Matt, All right. thanks for being on the show. It's, I appreciate uh, it. A lot me. more things to talk about, but. Uh, yeah, 2014 will be another great year for us. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Matt. 
Next time you stop in at the Schaumburg Township District Library, you might see some familiar names on the shelves. Find out more next here on Speaking of Schaumburg. After years of hard work, two employees of the Schaumburg Township District Library recently received the welcome news that their writing would be picked up by two separate publishing houses. Joining us today to tell us about their books are authors Susan Mira and Amy Alessio. Well, welcome. Hi. Thank you. Uh, what are the books about? And, and, and who wrote the first? I mean, how did you do this? <laughs> I'm going to write a book. Oh, I'm going to write a book, too. Well, you know, Amy got her contract first, so you can yeah. go first. I took a writing class a few years ago with uh, Joe Conrath, who's a well-known writer who lives in Schaumburg also. And uh, it was about six years ago. It was a teen mystery about a girl who's embarrassed by her Civil War reenacting family. And she solves a murder. And I, I signed with an agent, and it took a little while. And now, what do you know about murders here? Hold on, let me back, let's back <laughs> yes, up a little bit. Here. That's not based on anything local, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And then it, it uh, got picked up by a publisher, and it went from there. What, what, who? Who's the publisher? Oh, it's 4RV. It's a small press out of Oklahoma. So I was pretty excited. How, did you, how did you market that? Uh, what did you do? Oh, well, I had an agent. I signed with an agent through a local conference called Love is Murder. I went and met him there. Love is I Murder? Signed, yes, <laughs> yes. It's great is about mysteries. Is that the name of book? <laughs> no, It should be the name of a book. I like that. What, what, no, what? My book is uh, Taking the High Ground. Okay. All right. Civil War reenactment, huh? Yes, she's embarrassed by her family doing that. My husband and I used to do it, and there are so many funny things with that, so I knew that it had to be a book. What were you? Um, well, I wore the hoop skirt and the outfit, and I did quilting demonstrations, and just even like folding the hoop skirt to get in the car, you know, things like that. I have and that I problem, had... <laughs> too. <so. laughs> it's a big problem, although now I have a bigger car. But <laughs> And her character is, is wearing uh, the Civil War uh, costume yes. on the cover. You might yes. want to. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Holding her cell phone. <laughs> really? <laughs> so Amy's going to have a book launch party in February, and her and her husband will be um, dressed yes, in their oh, yes. Civil War <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, which, how, which side was he on? Oh, oh, we were with the North, for sure. <laughs> Although somebody has to reenact both sides to make it accurate. But we are. We're going to let teens dress up in my outfit. We're going to have like a Civil War crime scene uh, for them to solve. It'll be fun. Oh, yeah. I think the weapons are always a I know. Bit, right? <laughs> I know. but That's yes. what they like the best. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susan's party is first. We're looking forward to that. So. Now, tell me about your book. <laughs> um, my book is about a 16-year-old deaf girl who gets kidnapped. And that happens right in the beginning, so it's not a spoiler or anything. And then the 17-year-old boy who um, really liked her and wanted to go out with her is a prime suspect in the kidnapping. So chapter one begins with him being questioned by the FBI. And throughout the book, he's trying to find her. And um, so the, uh, there's alternating chapters with the girl who's you know, kidnapped and in captivity and the boy who's trying to find her. My, my. What's, what's the name of the book? The book is called Show Me a Sign. It was published by Oak Tara, which is a publishing house uh, local to Illinois. It's uh, based out of Wheaton. And um, the book launch party is going to be December 9th at the library at 7.30 p.m. And it's a, it's a Monday night. You're invited because <laughs> it's for adults and teens. And um, we're going to have a martial arts demonstration with a local uh, martial arts academy that just opened up recently in Town Square. Okay. And they're going to come because the girl is yeah, kidnapped. Yeah, I see the thing in, on the windows, in, but down, uh, right uh -huh. past the, yeah, yeah. So since the girl is kidnapped in the, for, in the beginning of the book, um, we're going to show teens and adults how to prevent being grabbed uh, by somebody, like some self-defense moves. Sure. And yeah. we're going to have cake and prizes, and um, it's going to be fun. How long does it take for you to write the book? That's a good question. When people ask mm -hmm. me that, it's hard to say because you're not just working on the book every day. Like I've got four man complete manuscripts and they've all been um, written and revised over a period of seven years. And then I'm doing that in addition to my full-time job and being a mom and everything else. So I don't know how, it would, how long it would take to just sit down straight and write a, write a book. Okay, when you're, okay. You know. two years, three years, one year? Four years? I think it depends on the book, but like sure. I said, this one probably my first draft of it was completed about four years ago, and then since then I've been revising. Were you working with somebody when 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 you uh, 
uh, we're doing the book, you know, was somebody looking at, looking at it? Do you have somebody yes. read it and yeah. check it? Yeah, I have just... what I call critique partners. Okay. And um, usually other writers. And then I've also, I had also entered it in contests where judges would look at it and they would make suggestions. In fact, I won um, a writer's contest with, with this entry. Okay. Uh, so. Well, that's, that's, that's something. That's really something. Yeah. I wrote a column on, on, on nature and wildlife for three years for the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Oh. Uh, every every Sunday, I was I was in the Cleveland Plain Dealer. Plenty of topics you can cover with that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, I had a chance to to, to uh, write about my kids' interaction with nature and with animals too. Oh, uh, nice! That must so have been kind I, of fun. I was getting notes from little old ladies and <laughs> how, much, how much they liked the, about the squirrels the, in their backyard. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I like yeah, yeah. Well, um, one of the things uh, I want to mention about the book launch party on December 9th is that we will have a sign language interpreter because um, the main character, one of the main characters is deaf, and we're certainly inviting the deaf community to come and enjoy it and um, want them to know that there will be a sign language interpreter. And we'll be showing a short PowerPoint and it will have captions and everything too. Now what's, what's the first piece of work that, you, that you've ever written? You know, I'm really glad you asked because Amy and I both had short stories published in this book, Missing. Four years ago? Five yes, years ago? Yeah, four. Well, four, yeah. And um, Missing uh, was edited by Amy. It's, a, it's an anthology of short stories, and everything, um, every story is about somebody or something that's missing. And um, the proceeds went for the. It's uh, what, it was a, a, for an organization of, for, that helps find missing children. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. and half the proceeds from Show Me a Sign will be um, donated to organizations that help uh, victims of human trafficking. Okay, all right. Now, how did you, what's the first thing you've ever, ever written? What, Boy, yeah. I think in grade school, but we won't go back uh, that <laughs> part of those works of art. Uh, <laughs> I uh, was asked to write a short story for an anthology of, right before that one with the same characters, and so that was about five years ago. I also have been, written a number of librarian books, which, you know, are, are hot bestsellers, uh, you know, that everybody's <laughs> familiar with. Anyway. You got it, yes. <laughs> well, Amy's very innovative and comes up with a lot of creative programs for teens. Okay. So, yeah. Well, with the teen yeah. center there, that's got to be, you know, really helpful then, isn't it? I mean, it mm -hmm. is. And yes. her books are all, well, you know, I'm, you should be <laughs> <laughs> We're good for I each keep other. Jumping in. <laughs> we encourage each other through this whole process. Yeah. Um, I wrote books about teen programming. I have one coming out about teen mysteries, uh, which helped a lot as it gave me ideas how to promote uh, this one. So while I was working on that, it's a lot of fun. So I write those for the American Library Association. I have a few It's got to be kind of daunting to, 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 to uh, decide to write a book. And, and, and the, pro the whole process, like giving a speech or a presentation, yes. there's, a, there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, you know? And there's some people get the, the first two and the third one, they, they don't know how to end, so they say, well, and that's it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, and the thing is, even when you come up with your beginning, middle, and end, as you're writing, the characters tend to take on a life of their own, and sometimes things happen that you hadn't intended to begin with, and conversations. Oh, yeah. How could take she do place. this? And, and so, I mean, I actually ended up having, believe it or not, a, a gorilla in my story, which I don't even like gorillas. How did, how did a gorilla get in the story? Somebody well, slipped that gorilla in. And, um, <laughs> Were you yeah. eating a lot of bananas at the time? I don't know. But, um, well, the girl in the story is the daughter of a zoo veterinarian. Yeah. So it, it just happened that way. Oh. <laughs> so there had to be a gorilla. If I want to buy your book, where do I go? Quickest and easiest way is Amazon.com, and uh, mine is also on Okatara.com, and Amy's, yours is also on? At uh, uh, 4RVPublishing.com. So. Do, 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 uh, do you have them at the library, too? We do. Yes. Absolutely. Little stand, oh, yes. little stand here. With, <laughs> okay. We should have said that. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. It's time again for the Schomburg Youth Orchestra to celebrate the season with an evening of holiday music and lively entertainment. Find out more next here on Speaking of Schomburg. The Schomburg Youth Orchestra's Presto Holiday Concert is a great way to celebrate the holiday season. Here to tell us about this year's show, our youth orchestra manager, Rob Palekas, and orchestra director, Joe Momquist. Welcome to Speaking of Schaumburg once again. Thank once you. Again. Glad once to be again. here. Yeah, absolutely. Rob, tell us about your, uh, your show. 
Okay, Joe. <laughs> oh, the holiday wh- show? What does... <laughs> Tell me, <laughs> Joe. You're on. Tell us about the show. Uh, some going to be some fantastic music. We've managed to find a lot of holiday music uh, uh, that's festive, um, that, that's challenging for the orchestra. It's not just your ordinary Christmas carols, but it runs the gamut. You'll find Christmas carols dressed up in full symphonic garb. Oh, really? All the way down to excerpts from holiday favorites such as Hansel and Gretel and the Nutcracker. I noticed you said Hansel and Gretel. I, I've always said Hansel and Gretel. Is it Hansel? I have no idea. Well, now how can you, you know. Hansel and Gretel. Yeah. Is the uh, proper okay. way. Yes, Back what? in Schomburg, that's how they would say it. Okay. The old Schomburg. Please proceed. By the famous the Engelbert Humperdinck. <laughs> Humperdinck, yeah. there really is such a man. The, hum, the, the, not, not Humperdinck. Not, not the, yeah, not Humperdinck from, uh, what is it, the Princess I know, but I thought, it, yeah. I thought it was pronounced the same way. No, is it because it's Germanic or Teutonic? I think so. Okay. Uh, I think what I like going back to the program. What I like about about the music that that Joe selects is that it's not it's not some of it's not specifically holiday music. Uh, I think there is music that that evokes that that kind of that holiday feeling. Um, we're doing some Vivaldi. Mm-hmm. Um, the all the uh, Four Seasons. Um, was it actually the, the double trumpet? Yeah, it's concerto. a trumpet concerto, uh, okay. but, but very festive sounding. Okay. Right, and and just lends itself to the to that. Uh, we have, we actually do. Uh, we're going to be doing um, an intermezzo. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, for, by Mascagni, it's from an opera. It has nothing to do with Christmas in any way, shape, or manner, but it's very reflective, so it's just... But you can do some traditional Christmas. Yeah. We Three Kings, Oh Holy Night, uh, Sleigh Ride, we have guest conductors doing that. Uh, it, uh, you know, it really runs the gamut from, from Baroque, from, from uh, 18th century Baroque to 20th century, uh, you know, kind of pop more, you know. No, you do things other than pops. just play music. I, I know you, you, you have some, uh, yeah, we, uh, uh, you have a kind of loose, a loose script of some this sort. Is, uh, loose is a pretty good word for it. Presto uh, started in 1999, and we wanted to, we wanted to set out to, we, uh, we set out to do something than just a holiday concert. Uh, so we, we had a narrator uh, narrate the first concert um, and, and just do little, just kind of amusing uh, bits uh, in between the numbers. It kind of tie it all together. Uh, and, and it played very well. So we thought, well, we can't let the audience you know, down. They're gonna wanna see more of this. So, so over the years, we've kept putting, putting in more characters, more narrators, uh, and guest And the show artists. kept getting longer. And longer. it got longer and longer, and now it lasts, um, I don't know, not two hours, not even two hours. It's, it's nice and it's a, it's a nice. Yeah, but it adds uh, a nice flavor to it, though. It adds a nice flavor to it. I think, I think it just kind of, it just gets people in the mood, lets them forget uh, the holiday rush. You know, it's on a Saturday, they might have been shopping all day. Now, now I've asked this before. Now I'm going to ask it again. Presto, where did the name come from? Come from? That's an old one. It is. Did you come up with uh, it? I think I did, yeah. We, uh, it, it started as a children's concert series back in 1995, and we were looking for some, just something to call it, and Presto just seemed as very energetic, you know, it's something that kids could, you know, you think of a magician, Presto, yeah, sure. Changeo. Yeah, yeah. And a, uh, it's a musical term and that it's means a musical very term. quick and lively. Ah, okay. Right. And, and what, one of the, the great things about the shows that Rob puts together is, it, it's about it's a it's a youth orchestra. It's not um, supposed to be about putting on shows. It's it's not a show. It's a concert. But he manages to find a way to add this extra element to it without detracting from the musical aspect. So the kids never feel like their music and their playing is subservient to just being part of a show. They really are the show, and the show works around them. And right. Yeah. The the stars are are you the gonna, students. You're gonna rest the har- harpist again. No, no, we, there's a bit we do at 12 Days of Christmas. She's still the, serving time. With, right, right. We haven't... Um, You're not going not gonna to arrest the Harpers? That's a high point. No, we, you know, we haven't done that one in a while. I'll have to bring that back. But, sure uh, we did. We did it last year with the twins. Oh, we did? Yeah. Okay. I mean, remember the wrong twin got accused? Oh, that's they right. They still haven't sorted it out. It's a, <laughs> it's a mess. Lost. Well, it is sorted, actually. <laughs> the whole affair is yeah, sorted. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, I want to harp uh, on that, though. Oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> um... Come on, guys. <laughs> Come on, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm lost now. I can pedal more of these I if you I knew want. you were going to say something like <laughs> that. String you along oh, a little bit. Oh, gosh. You can edit that out, uh, right? <laughs> leave, leave that in. We have please. I, uh, I, want, I want people to get the flavor of uh, what, the, what oh, I have to put up oh, with. Oh, man. Uh, back to the music, though. 
the kids, uh, and I hate to call them kids. They're how young how many are, first of all, how many are there? We, we've how got about 70 in this group. 70. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a large orchestra. It's Good. a full orchestra. You've got, you've got your whole complement of, of winds and brass and strings. Um, it, it's just you close your eyes and, and you lose yourself in the music. And, and that's. Now how do you audition? Do you audition for that for the show? I mean, you know. Well, they audition for a placement within the youth orchestra program. I understand that. Uh, okay. As you know, we have four orchestras sure, structured, sure. and this this is the capstone of the whole program. The but I, but don't you have like have A, B, C, or one, two, three, four different no. levels? Well, within the orchestra program, yes, but not within the. How do I say this? Uh, there's four levels of orchestra, but within the orchestra, we don't audition seats. They're, they're, they're placed in the first. It's like if you were in a choir, you don't think for a moment that are you standing 17th soprano or you're just in the soprano section. Yeah, but I mean, so, you, you have more than, a, you said how many people, 70? About 70. You have more program. than that number in w within the program. Right. Yeah. yeah, the other kids are, are working their way up to it. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, Misunderstood your and, question. And it's no, a, uh, we'll cut that out. We'll take it out. We don't have seven, well. With the harp stuff. <laughs> Do you know it's a big year for us? Is it really? Very big year. Why don't you interview me here? You know, you know, give me a. What do you think of the orchestra? I think it's great. If you close your eyes and, and, and blot out some of the silliness that takes place. Uh, <laughs> the, no, it, it, you'd, you'd think you, you had the Chicago Symphony. There are times, there are times when it, it, the, the, the tone is so pure the music is so so great, it, it just you just lose yourself in it. I'm amazed at the maturity that you get out of these students. Yeah. They play very, very, and, and for this year in particular, very mature, expressive control of the music. If I choose the music well and the students work hard, there's no reason they shouldn't sound at least in some aspects similar to a Chicago symphony. How long have you, have you been doing this, Joe? 25 years. 25 years. Yeah. Big anniversary. 25th anniversary, silver anniversary. Okay. With a big celebration. Symphony Center. Huh? It's Symphony Center next June. Cannot wait. And who's, who's how, how many kids are young? Boy, young? well, we did this five years ago for our 20th. We had over 100 musicians perform, alumni musicians. So we're okay. hoping to get at least that many. It's going to be a big You're event. You're going to get alumni coming back for it too, huh? We will. Yeah, from, uh, I know that we just signed someone up who played for us in 1994 and five. Wait, wait, Steve you said, Reichelt, uh, so you, said you signed, so. signed somebody? What, well, a, a are, guy are who actually. Are these now, under contract? These he was, <laughs> right, he's not cheap, you know. So he, he actually is a, uh, does training for our youth orchestra kids. He's a bass player. He started out playing with the youth orchestra and now he's a professional bass musician. How long have you been doing this, Rob? Uh, I've been with the program since its uh, second season, 18, uh, 1989. So coming up on 25 for me too. So you're ready, ready rehearsing the program, aren't you? Uh, we've started dabbling a little bit on it just okay. so the students have it in their hands. It's sure. very difficult music and they'll need the lead time to prepare their parts. Okay. But right. we'll start rehearsing in earnest after the spring concert. Okay. So the show is when? The concert is Saturday, December 21st at 3.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Go to prairiecenter.org to buy tickets or call 847-895-3600. How much are those tickets? Tickets are $24 for adults, only $15 for children, students, or seniors. Okay. Great deal. Joe, any, any last words? No, just wanted to shake your hand one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having us. That'll do it for this edition of Brief Speaking of Schomburg. Join us again next year, next year, for another all-new program. Until then, I'll see you around town.